I think we need to talk to them about that. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming on. It's good to see so many people in the Strapi webinar. It says we have 64 people, which is amazing. Yeah, we see a lot of excitement from Stefan. Thanks for joining. Um, I'll give everybody a few minutes to come on, to say hi, tell us where you're from, where you're joining us. Hey, Saad. Hey, Arnold. Um, there's Charles saying hi to everyone. Harshi. <laughs> Yes, this will be recorded and will be available on our YouTube um, sometime next week. So don't worry about that. But do stay on. <laughs> don't leave us. Um, oh, we have people from Paris, Brazil, Detroit. That is amazing. And Ireland. Oh, we have a lot. We have people from Quebec also. Um, I usually wait for us to reach like a certain threshold before we get started. So today we will we are joined by Charles, who is a co-founder and developer at Snipkart, and we will be building um, an e-commerce app with Next Nux, sorry. So it's Nux.js from scratch using Snipkart and Strapi, um, and we look like we have enough people, and I guess we can get started. Charles, are you ready to? Yes, I am. I am. So hi everyone. Salut tout le monde. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to start right away. Uh, I'm going to start by sharing my screen. Perfect. Yep. So, as Daniel was saying, we're going to do, uh, we're going to go through a complete e commerce application development using Strapi as a back end and then. Uh, Nuxt for the front end and Snipcart for the e-commerce part. So let me start by opening my Strapi admin, if that's all right. Uh, uh, I already have Strapi running on my computer, so I installed it uh, through uh, Docker uh, previously. So here's my Strapi instance running. And the first thing we're going to do is that we need to start building our content model for uh, to deal with the uh, e-commerce. So the first thing I did, actually, uh, I already some I already did some uh, stuff previously to this uh, talk, so uh, we won't spend too many time configuring and uh, eating bugs. But uh, anyway, we do have a content type. So in Strapi all the content that you have are referring to content types. So that's how you model your content. So in this case, we do have a new content type, which is called product, which will be the product themselves. Uh, we do have the name, which will be the name of the product, the SKU, the unique identifier of the product, the description, with, which will be a short text describing the product, uh, an image, which will use the image picker control from Strapi, which is uh, pretty cool. We do have the price, too, of the product, of course. And then we created something pretty cool. Uh, that's the first time I saw this. Uh, uh, I mean, I did not play a lot with Strapi before that, but I found it very useful. You can create components that can be repeatable. So we do have a feature with Snipcart, which are custom fields, allowing you to create variants for uh, products. So in that case, I created a component that which is repeatable, which is called custom fields. And I added three properties under this component, which is the name of the custom field, so the name of the variant, a Boolean indicating if it's required or not, and an options, which is a text input. But I'm going to explain all what's the purpose of this later in the demo. So once the content type is created, you're going to have a new collection under collection types right here. So I'm going to go to this collection products. I already have some products, but I'm going to create a new one right now. So for this demo, we're going to build a small cupcake shop. Uh, I 
with Snipcart, we saw a rise into new customers uh, building small uh, shops uh, for bakeries and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure it's related to like all this pandemic stuff. So small businesses like uh, bakeries and stuff like that want to go online. So uh, we're going to show how to do that. So we're going to create a rainbow cupcake. The skew will be rainbow. Let's price at, at five bucks. Uh, description, colorful, up, up, yeah, flavor. Oops. And we're going to pick an image. I already uploaded some images into Strapi. So let's pick the rainbow one. And we're going to add some custom fields. So we want to allow our customers to buy the cupcake as a single unit, but we also want to available in uh, like box size of uh, six or 12. So we're going to have our first option, which is single, then six pack, which will cost 10 bucks more and 12 pack bucks more. So these is the syntax that will be required by Snipcart. Uh, we do have documentation about how custom fields uh, work. I don't know if somebody of my team is in the chat that can send the documentation about the product custom fields, but that's all available in our documentation. So I'm going to hit save here, publish. And if we go into the products, we can see that the rainbow cupcake is here. So that's pretty simple. That's basically all we need for now on the strappy side to be up and running. And so we can start to build our next application. But before that, I'm going to do one last thing that is related to Strapi is that I'm going to install the GraphQL Strapi plugin because I want to use their GraphQL API. So in my Docker console right here, I'm going to re-yarn Strapi install Graph. Well, that's going to install the Strapi plugin that will allow us to have a, a GraphQL endpoint, but that's already done on my hand, so I don't really have to run it. And one last thing that I have to do in Strapi is that we need to have this API public. So we're going to have to go to settings, user and permission, roles, public. Hey, Charles, we were getting a, a few complaints on the screen side. Could you? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, that, that looks great. Well, that's uh, better. That's yeah. Perfect. I can zoom. Ooh, good. So in Strapi, as I was saying, you have to go to settings, roles, and then in product, you have to check find one and find. So that will make the GraphQL API available publicly. So once it's all done, you can go to your strappy URL slash GraphQL, and you get a pretty neat GraphQL playground right here. So you can run some queries and you can see that all your products are actually there. So that's what we're gonna use in next. Okay, next step, we have to create our next step. So in my Terminal, I'm going to create a new next app. X factory, but that's the command that you need to run to create a new next app with NPX. But in my case, that's already done. So I won't have to go through this, but I can start my next application with NPM run dev. So just going to have to wait a few seconds. So as you can see, my next step is getting started. So I can go back in my browser and hit like hellos in the 3000. And we do have a brand new next app that we can start 
working with. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna have to do is to prepare my Nuxt application by installing the Nuxt.js Apollo module in GraphQL in my application. So that's already done in my case, but that's the command that can be used to install it. So to do to configure Apollo into a Nux application, you need to go to Nux config file, which is, which is Nux config GS. This is where all the configuration about uh, your Nux application will reside. So you, you need to locate the models array, and you can see that I registered Apollo right here, the Nux model. And then at the top of my configuration file, I added the configuration related to Apollo, exactly. So this is the endpoint where my GraphQL is uh, available. So I had to specify it right here. So now, my, in theory, my Nux application has access to a GraphQL endpoint, and you could start writing queries and uh, using some uh, uh, methods that are available that we will see later. So the first thing I'm going to do then is that uh, we want to make the application look quite good. So I'm a, a developer, not a designer. So I'm going to rely on uh, some a, a UI framework, which is called Tailwind, which is very uh, popular at the moment. So I'm pretty sure that most of you folks have heard about it. So to do so within a Nux application, you can install a model which is called Nux.js Tailwind CSS. So you can use NPI, npm install Nux.js Tailwind CSS. And once it's installed, you go back into your Nux config file, you locate build models, and you can register your Tailwind. Tailwind CSS model. So in any components created in your application, you will have access to the all uh, UI framework itself. So you can start using their CSS classes and uh, stuff like that. So let's start by creating our home page. So if you go to pages, we have the index file. So I already started it. I already uh, did it completely, basically. So this is a, a div. And these are the classes that you can use when you use a Tailwind. So basically, you have a grid system and uh, plenty of stuff. It's pretty similar to like a Twitter bootstrap and, and all those things, but it's a bit more focused on components-driven uh, applications if I can say. So as you can see, in my index file, I will loop through the products and I will show a card for each cupcake that we're going to sell. I'm going to show the image. So I created some mocked data right here in my component. So you can see that in my, my data object will return an array called products that will contain a single cupcake. So if I... Oops. If I refresh my next application, oh, I think I might have to restart. My, just want to make sure that, okay. I have to restart my next uh, server because the Tailwind styles were not applied. That should not take too long. Yeah, my computer yeah, gets okay. a I bit like. Wow, wow. That's okay. I totally understand. <laughs> yeah, the demo. I guess that's French for the demo effect. While, while that's building, I think we can get through a couple of questions. I think I saw a question in the chat. 
Um, someone wanted to know why you chose Strapi. Um, what benefits? Okay, so the question is, why did you decide to do this on Strapi? What are the benefits compared to Contentful? Yeah, actually, uh, I'm not sure about the pricing of Strapi, but I know that Contentful is pretty expensive. And I really do like the UI of Strapi and the fact that you can host it uh, on your own. So it's open source. You can self-host it wherever you want. Uh, the UI is very clean. So uh, I'd be very happy to like end, end this over to a customer. And uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and I mean... Strapi is uh, very developer centric. All the RPI and stuff are well done. So for me, it's uh, if I had to choose for a personal project between Strapi and Contentful, that would be a no brainer to go with Strapi just because of all their documentation and the way that the UI works and all that stuff. Yeah, I hope that, so, uh, um, that answers that question. I've uh, dropped a link our pricing page so we do have an enterprise offering but if um, we are open source of course and self-hosted so it's completely free unless you need um, some of our advanced features but anyway i'll let you continue with with that and we'll get to Perfect. a few more questions later or do you want to get through one i think um yeah, <laughs> sure. Francois wanted to know how important a role does your wonderful partner francois play in your life <laughs> 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 That's a good question. Uh, he he helps me uh, winning some uh, games of Call of Duty Warzone. So uh, I'd say that's the most important role at the moment. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Exactly. Game gaming over yep. everything. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I think a very snipcut specific question. Someone uh, so Sebastian wants to know when can we expect the subscriptions feature available in Snipcart's v3? Yeah, that's an excellent question that we receive multiple times a day. Uh, actually, we're supposed to release them by the end of the year. We are still aiming for this. Uh, I mean, the subscriptions that we had in the v2 was not uh, was too basic. So in the v3, we really want to push it further, make it better, support multiple payment gateways and stuff like that. So it's it's completely a, a rewrite of the feature that we had in the V2. It's nothing the same at all. So it, it takes a bit longer to develop that than we expected, but uh, it, yeah, it's coming. By the end of the year, we will have a beta version yeah. for sure. Yeah. I think that's it. Awesome. Good, so, so any other questions? questions? I think we will, will let you um, none that I haven't answered. So I think we're good to continue from, from here. Perfect. So yeah, we do have our index page created, some styles with Tailwind, some mucked data right here. But now we need to connect it to our GraphQL endpoint. So I'm going to show you how. In a few seconds, just let me pull up my code. Good. So all I had to do in this file was to create a new query that I import here. I'm going to go to the query after. And then you have to create a new object in your component, which calls Apollo. And Apollo is the module that we uh, registered within Nux previously. And then we're going to specify products, which will fill the product salary that we emptied in the data object. And to fill this array, it will call the products query that we will go through shortly. And we also specify prefetch to true to make sure that our pages will be pre-rendered if we use the next generate command, which we will do later. So let's take a look at our queries. So I have two query, but we will start with products, which we which is basically the query that will uh, fetch all products from the from the GraphQL endpoint. So if we run this query, as you can see, all products are there. So query is imported, specified here. 
nothing to change in the template except the image URL, which is uh, a bit different. I created a small helper function right here that will return the full image URL. Since all the images are hosted on Strapi, I had to specify the uh, full, uh, the absolute URL. So that's pretty much it. So if I go there and refresh my next application, as you can see, all the products are fetched from my GraphQL endpoint and visible here. So if I go back to Strapi and create a new product, uh, let's say lemon cupcake, lemon, let's put its price at 10 bucks. It's an expensive one. Citrusy. Lemon finish, some custom fields too. Size, single, six. Let's make them a bit more expensive, just okay, save, publish. And now if I refresh the page, I now have my lemon cupcake showing directly here. So yeah, that's about it about the index page. So we now have a products listing with data coming directly from uh, Strapi. So now we want to be able to click on the cupcake and have a single a page where we see the product itself. So we're gonna create a new page for that. So if you go to pages, I created a folder called products with a folder underscore ID. This is a convention by Nux. So any when you have a URL, you, you see products slash the ID. So the underscore ID will get replaced by the parameter in, in the route right here. So that's kind of a placeholder here. So I created my index.view file in that folder. So as you can see, it's mostly the same uh, the same code as we have. This is gonna be the card showing the, the cupcake. And we have some mocked information coming uh, specified here in the data object. So if I it's save right here, refresh the page, I can see my dummy information here. So whenever I click on a cupcake, that works, but I only have static info. So we need to fetch the correct product for from Strapi. So to do so, we're gonna have to use GraphQL as well. Just let me pull out the code. So I had to make some changes to my index component. So as I did for, uh, for the products listing, I defined my product object right here, prefetch. I imported my product query, which will retrieve a product by its ID. So we have to pass some parameters to that product. So that can be done through the, the variables function right here, which will return an object with the parameter ID. And this ID will come from the route as I specified earlier with the underscore ID right here. So we can take a look at the query itself. It's query, I'm gonna paste it in the playground. So we're gonna try to find an ID that exists too. So you can run this query in the, the GraphQL playground and get the data you need. So that's nice. So now we updated the image URL as well to use the same L parameter that will use the, that will return a, an absolute URL prefetch. So if I go back to my application, I can refresh, click here, and now I have my products coming from Strapi correctly. 
So we do have the basis now. So the next step is going to be installing Stinkard itself into the application. So to do so, we will add some configuration into the Nux config file. So as you can see, I added some link into the link array. I added two pre-connect ins for uh, performance uh, stuff. This is going to indicate to your browser that it can cache and pre-connect to those URLs. Uh, our style sheet, snapcard.css. And then we also added our script file, snapcard.js right here. So, and one last thing into our main component, which is uh, the layout we will need to add a div with the ID snip chart. And this is where we will add the API key, which identifies your snip chart account. So that's pretty important. And this div is where snip chart will be mounted. So it's very important to put it outside the next application so that it does not get re-rendered where when you change routes or stuff like that. So snip chart is installed. If I Open my dev tools here and refresh. You can see that all the assets for, for Snipcart were correctly loaded. So now we add we have to add buy buttons to our project. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna add I bought the buy buttons directly in the single product page. So basically what you need to do when you add a new Snipcard product, it's simply to add a couple of uh, HTML attributes to any HTML elements. Uh, it's usually a, a button, but you could use a, a tag or anything you want. The important thing is that you add the Snipcard add item CSS class. This is our Snipcard will know that when this specific element is click, it's actually a buy button. And then you have to bind some attributes to the, the product coming from the GraphQL endpoint, such as the ID, price, URL. I'm gonna go back through over this uh, parameter later on. The description, image, the name, stuff like that. If I save here, go back to my product, I now have a add cart button. So if I click on it, oops, I should empty my card. Yeah, you see that it's correctly adding to the card. So we're almost done here. <laughs> we still have some stuff to do, but yeah, we, we can add items to the card. Now I'm gonna show you how to deal with the custom fields that uh, I talked about uh, in the first place. Um, Well, I have to make some changes into my component here to deal with the custom fields. But before that, I'm gonna update a little bit my query, my GraphQL query here to include the custom fields because they were not at first. One cool thing about GraphQL is that you have full control on what you, what data you will end up with. So in my case, I don't need anything else that these information so I can format it the way I want. So I'm gonna ask for custom fields. So if I look at the output right here, the JSON object, I'm gonna have the custom fields as an array. So that's gonna work well for to create our buy button correctly. So in my case, I'm gonna use this that product, this custom fields. I'm gonna run some mapping and reducing magic to end up with an object that will be similar to something like that. Uh, that the uh, item. So that's how it's gonna. That's the output that this method will render, and this is what Snipcart needs to define custom fields. And we will map this computed property called custom fields to our buy button with the vbind directive. So all the, all the attributes returned by this computed property will be added to the product itself. So if I go back 
to my product. And if I inspect element right here, you can see that some custom fields are defined. And if I add my items to the cart, you can see that we have box size. You can pick a six pack, 12 pack. And as you can see, the price gets adjusted depending on the selection here. So I, th I think for it might be relevant to what you're showing. Uh, we have a question in the chat about adding local payments, payment methods to Snipcart. Is that something you can do? And if so, how? Yeah, actually, we do have a new feature called, but it's not that new anymore, but called Custom Payment Gateway that allows you to integrate Snipcart with any payment system that you can think of. Basically, you become responsible of taking care of the, the payment itself. So Snipcart will redirect you to a URL where you have the control or where you can like deal with the payment and then redirect the customer to Snipcart and complete the, the purchase. But we also do support a couple of uh, payment gateways uh, out of the box. But if you need some, one specific that we don't, you can use that feature to build your, your own integration. And it makes it very flexible, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Many, many um, payment methods or um, what's the appropriate word, aggregators that let you plug in their service to something like Snipcut and uh, yeah, exactly. enable so much. Yeah, it does. We used to have a lot of requests about uh, some uh, like more uh, less popular, if I can say, payment methods that we were not aware of. So we decided to uh, pull this feature instead of trying to integrate with every request we had. So it, it requires quite a bit of coding for sure, but it's very flexible. And we already have several customers that used it uh, successfully and are very happy with it. So, yep. That's great. Thank, thank you for your answer. So uh, I will continue. So now we do have uh, an index page. We do have a product page. Why it didn't work? Oh, it's going to be fixed in another commit. So, but we want to add a nav bar to our sites to make navigation uh, easier. So. Just let me show you how I did this. I created a new component in the components folder of my Nuxt application called navbar. We so we do have here a link to the index page. And then we do have a button which will show the card when you click on it because it has the sneak card checkout CSS class. So we do have a few classes like this that will uh, that are like uh, that will make Snipcart aware of these elements, and Snipcart will react on the click of this element, for instance. So whenever an element has the Snipcart checkout CSS class on it, the card will automatically show if somebody clicks on it. And then we have another span right here with the Snipcart items count. So Snipcart will fill this span with the number of items in the card automatically. So this is our navbar. And if we go to our default layout, I imported the component right here, added it to my template. So if I go back to my application, as you can see, we do have our own page. We can show the card, can continue shopping, go back to the index and navigate through the store easily. So that's our application that we will now Looking deploy. Nice, by the way. Thanks. That's the application that we'll now deploy on uh, Netlify. So I already did some stuff for this. Uh, yep, just let me code. Perfect. So just before going through Netlify, uh, I'm going to show you some stuff that I changed. I created some environment environment variables. So we do have 
uh, the strapy URL, the star URL, which is actually the URL that our star will be on, uh, on Netlify. And this is our backend our URL and our Snipyard API key right here. And I use those variables everywhere, everywhere in the app. So in Netlify, we can set them appropriately. So if we go to Netlify, I already created my website here. I linked it to my GitHub repo, which is not public yet, but I'm going to make it public after the, the, the talk. Uh, the build command is uh, the npm run generate, which will run Nux generate that will build our static application. So if we go to this site, we can see that we have the same store hosted on Netlify. But as you can see, we don't have all our products. So we need to set up some kind of continuous deployment. So it's very easy to do with Netlify and Strapi. So in Netlify, I'm going to go into continuous deployment. I'm going to go into build looks add a build look. A build look is basically a new URL that whenever uh, you call it, it will trigger a new build. So we call it Strapi Webhook. We do have this URL that is generated automatically. So we're going to go back into Strapi, go to plugins, uh, settings, sorry, webhooks. We will add a new webhook. Netlify deploy, a URL that was generated by Netlify. And we want this webhook to be called whenever an entry is either created, updated, deleted, or, or any changes to our content, we want to trigger a new build. So we're going to save that. We're going to go to our products, uh, go back to lemon cupcake and say, uh, Test just to make sure that it's updated. So if we take a look at Netlify, we can see that a new build was triggered by Strapi Webhook. So all things are starting to get wired together. So we can take a look at the build output right here. It's pretty fast usually. Yeah, it's done. So if I refresh my page, I see all my products. I see the update that I did. I can add it to the cart. And we can even go through a checkout process completely. So this is the part, by the way, if nobody, if some people said it. And since we are in test mode, we don't have to provide any card number or anything like this. We can just place the order right away. And there we have a new order that was placed through our store that we put in place in a couple of minutes. So that's pretty cool. If we go back to Snipcard and that's Snipcard dashboard. So I'm going to go through a, a quick overview of the dashboard itself just to show you a little bit how it works. So that's the home page of the dashboard. This is where you can see some insights about your sales and how things are going with your business. You can see number of orders by period and stuff like that. Latest completed orders. Uh, if we go back to orders right here, we can see that this is the order that I just placed a few six seconds ago. So if I click on it, I can see all the information about who made the purchase, shipping info, the payment here. So you can manage order right here. If you have a refund to issue, that can be done through the dashboard as well. Uh, we do have subscriptions too. I won't go through them since we it's not yet supported by V3. Uh, you can take a look at the abandoned cards on your site. We have the recovery campaign, which is a very nice feature that we released a while ago that allows you to define automatic 
campaigns that will reach out to your customers that abandoned their carts. There's a significant number of people who add items to the cart but never complete their purchase. So a good way to like convert them is to send emails and stuff like that with maybe a discount. So you can even attach a discount to that specific campaign. So in that case, that will send an email whenever a cart have, has been abandoned for one hour, then you can add a 10% discount to the cart. You can edit the template so you have full control on the emails that will be sent to your customers. So you can set up cam campaigns through there. You can view list of customers. You can create discounts. You can upload digital files, stuff like that. So that's like the operational side of Snipcart where merchants will spend most of their time managing their store. And on the right side, we do have the configuration. So that's where you're gonna configure your payment methods. Uh, so you can connect with Stripe, PayPal, Square. Uh, that's where you can enable custom payment gateway that we talked about a bit earlier. Uh, you can define your taxes. You can even have your own tax system that you integrate with via Webhooks with Snipcart. Uh, we do integrate with TaxCloud, TaxJars, with which are tax provider to make things simpler for merchants in the US and Europe. Uh, you can define shipping. That's what I did uh, uh, in the demo. We have multiple shipping methods. The custom shipping one is where you can add your own shipping rates. So in my case, I created a free shipping. Uh, I could have decided to scope this shipping method to a specific country, even to a specific province, uh, let, uh, postal code. Let's say you want to offer like uh, local delivery or stuff like that. You, you can implement this with our custom shipping methods. Uh, you can define multiple rates based on the total weight of the card itself. So. That's a pretty common way of dealing with shipping rates in the e-commerce space. And we also have some integrations with the shipping providers. So you can get live shipping estimate through FedEx, USPS, and all the others that you can see right here. We do have webhooks. So when some events happen on our site, such as a new order or stuff like that, we can ping your application with some info so you can update your uh, inventory si management system, your uh, CRM or whatsoever. And one important thing is the domains and URLs. I don't know if you do remember that I talk about the attribute that the item URL at first, this one, it's very important because since all the products are defined directly on your site, Nothing will prevent me from using my dev tools, going there, locating the price attribute, putting zero here, start, and I could try to place an order at zero dollars. However, we built something for this. Basically, when you define your products, you set the data item URL, so Snipcart will make a request to this URL before checkout to make sure that all the attributes in the markup was not tempered with. And in the dashboard, you must define which domains can be crawled by this process. So in my case, I set the Cupcakes Factory Strapi Netlify app, which is my Netlify application domains. And there's a bunch of our configuration. I don't think that we should spend time going through that. Maybe just the email templates because it's it's cool. But you can update uh, email templates right here. So you can say bonjour, I. You can update, update in multiple languages and you have a live preview on the right side like this. So, well, that's about it for me. I don't know if, uh, I guess there might be have some questions. That was a really cool demo, Charles. Thank you. Um, and I, I feel like building a cupcake website of my own now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for doing that. We do have yeah, my a pleasure. couple of questions in the chat. 
Um, I'll start with the one which is directly related to the last thing you were talking about on the second last. So someone wanted to know how you would connect Strapi with the product features within Snipcart to keep track of product quantities. Yeah, actually, the product feature of Snipcart works pretty uh, simply. All you can do is put a URL in. I'm going to share my screen again. I think it's. Yeah, sure. We can even do it right now. If I go back to my Strapi application, I can open my product. I can go back to Snipcart, this card, go to products, and you can input the product URL, you can hit fetch, and then you have your product. Which one did I import? White that chocolate the, blast. Yeah. yeah. Chocolate. So you have the product details right here. And if you want to enable inventory management in our application, you can go to inventory, turn it on, go back to products, and you can define even your stock by variance. And since we're using custom fields, you can say, okay, six packs, I do have uh, 12 of those. Okay, I have uh, six of those and the single one, I have only one. That doesn't make sense, but uh, anyway, you, you can use that. It's pretty simple because there's no need to add the products in Snipcart in the first place. As you can see, all the products that I ordered previously, like the lemon cupcake, it's already available in there because there was another place with that product and mm -hmm. all the information are there, there. But if you will need to fetch products before and because you want to set your stock before going live or stuff like that, you could have a page with all your products Type the URL right here, and all products will be fetched automatically. Oh, okay. Um, that uh, I hope that answers your your question. That was from Ove. I hope I pronounced your your name right. Um, we had another question, which was really about how you were consuming data from Strapi. So Nicola wants to know why you are using Apollo instead of the Next Strapi module. Yeah, actually, it's because I was playing around with Nuxt and uh, in Strapi, and I was not aware of that model, so I went straight ahead with Apollo, which I was familiar with, but I don't have like a good reason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's. Uh, I think there's a, a bit of content that will be coming out using that module also, so look out for that, Nicola. Um, we have another question uh, from Chris. Chris wants to know. Is there a way to integrate Snipcart with Strapi Auth? For instance, users can see past orders in the front end of the site. Yeah, it's not possible at the moment, but uh, I don't know if you mean seeing orders in Strapi directly, but on our end, we do have an API that allows you to fetch orders and stuff like that. So maybe that will be possible to pull this information from within the Strapi's dashboard, but uh, there's nothing like built in for this uh, at this point. Uh, okay. So you say you ha you do have something to, um, like an API that people can get data for uh, specific users? With the- uh, What does they make? So we have an API to uh, like retrieve orders or stuff like that. So if somebody would like to make a custom section in Strapi's dashboard, they could maybe like link this to our API and see orders directly in Strapi. So custom merchants will not need to log into our Snipcard dashboard and they could in theory manage everything from Strapi's. Oh, that, yeah, that, that would be, that would be very nice. So Strapi manages authentication and you have users register with like Strapi authentication and all all the users uh, have a relation in Snipcart for all the orders they have and you can pull that from Snipcart into the application that you're um, also authenticating with Strapi. Am I right? Yeah, that that I think that could work. Yeah, but uh, I mean it's a it's a pretty uh, complex question just to reply uh, on the fly like this, but. Uh, there's something, something that we could figure out, yeah. 
yeah okay um that that we'll, we'll give it some time and um who knows maybe we'll have another webinar on that <laughs> Um, and then we have Alexander who is asking, is it possible to add a, reduce the total checkout value by a credit in a specific currency that my users have in the Strapi database? That credit is granted via specific actions in gamification or with gift cards. Uh, we don't support gift cards at the moment. We, we do support creation of discounts via our API though. So I think that some kind of workflow could be built with some coding, but it's not something that we would support out of the box. Oh, okay. That, that's good to know. So discount codes and you enter that at uh, checkout and yep. that reduces the total amount, right? Yep. And all everything in Snapcard can be created through our API. So this can be used to build more complex applications and more like unique use cases like this. Yeah, it's always good to have stuff accessible via the API, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Same thing for Stripe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's something that we have in, uh, in common. We can, yeah. uh, I guess we are both headless in that respect. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have someone, um, MD wants to know, is there a specific Oh, sorry. Is there any delivery service provider available in Snipcard for Germany slash the EU? Not yet. We have plans in 2021 to build an integration with a service like uh, ShipStation or Shippo. We're not sure yet, but that will make m much many other carriers available through our application. But at the moment, we only support those that we saw in the dashboard earlier. But uh, I know that FedEx and UPS might be available in Germany, but that's very possible that it's not like the main one. But okay, at least it's um, in the works, so that's yeah. good to see. Yeah, and with our Webbooks shipping feature, people can also build their own like shipping calculator, so they could like link Snipcard API to uh, I don't know which carrier API and bring bring it all together. Oh, cool. Yeah, APIs are enabling everything these days. I mean, for a while now. <laughs> yeah, and we're a small team. I don't know if you were aware of that, but we're a very small team, so we can like decide to add uh, 22 new integrations in uh, like a week. So we decide yeah. to make features available for developers so they can build their own stuff if they need to. So. That is a very, very smart approach. So I just saw a question, or oh, not really a question, but Ricardo mentioned that um, they want to learn more about Strapi to make good API. So I just wanted to take this um, chance to send a link to our academy. We do have an academy where you can get a certificate at the end with um, Strapi training. So you should check that out if you want to get better at using Strapi. Um, That's and, very nice. Um, yeah, it is uh, really cool. Thank you. So we have one question on Snipcart. Someone wants to know if you have a, a roadmap. We don't have a public roadmap at this point. We do have our release notes, but we don't have a yeah, roadmap uh, per se at the moment. But I can say that we are working hard on subscriptions at the moment. This is what the team focus on mostly. But uh, yeah, and then in, in uh, 2021, we want to improve uh, shipping stuff and give some love to merchants using our dashboard with better analytics, more stuff like that. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I think uh, Matthew has shared a link to the release notes you mentioned. So yep. be sure to check that out, um, Jamie. I hope I said your name right. Um, yeah, if we, if, if we don't have any other questions for for Charles, uh, I want to direct everyone to the poll section. I asked a couple of questions. I think it would be great if you left some answers before we head out. We're almost at time. So um, I'll, I'll leave a couple, a minute or so to see if any questions pop up. Um, otherwise, thank you so much, Charles, for coming on and sharing um, all the Snipcard and Strapi knowledge and Nuxt knowledge, of course, that you shared. I really yeah, appreciate it. 
thanks for having me. That was a, a very nice opportunity, and uh, I really had fun playing with Strappy and Nox. And yeah, yeah, thanks for thanks again. And everyone seems to be um, sharing the same sentiments. Everyone keeps saying it was a really good demo. So again, thank you very much. Um, and um, we we will be. I just want everyone to know we'll be a bit more. Well, not a bit, a lot more consistent with our our webinars. So um, keep track of the live storm page on Strapi, and um, we have a, a webinar coming up on how Strapi.io, our website, was built using Strapi. So if you see our website, let me just send a link to that. A lot of people ask us, "How did you build your website?" So we built it with Strapi. And we'll be showing off how 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 that works and um, how our content is modeled and everything about that. So that's something you should be looking forward to. Um, so again, thank you everyone for coming on. It was really great to, to chat and see so many people from so many places. Um, and yeah, I'll be I'll be ending the webinar. So goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Um, I don't know if it's ended. Well, I clicked the button, but it's still loading. So I don't know what's happening.